um, yeah, we, we discussed uh, Bjorn. So the next next person in the pipeline is um, me. Yep, Ferrane. So let's see that. Yes. All right. So you tell us what, how you judge the reviews. Were they useful? Yeah, the reviews were really useful. Mm -hmm. um, they said that um, the structure was decent enough. Um, uh, uh, they didn't mention anything about the lack of um, um, uh, what was it called? Um, Uh, the abstract mm -hmm. because I didn't have one. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, for an article, this sort should be fine without them, apparently. Yep. Um, they mentioned uh, some things about uh, there um, being not enough references because I only have two. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and the um, uh, title wasn't really good enough, but uh, I that was because I misunderstood uh, what the title should be. I used the um, topic. As the title mm -hmm. rather than create one then based on the article. Yep. So I should probably have double checked that yep. with you. Yep. Uh, otherwise, it um, uh, was uh, yeah, some minor logical errors and typos, but it's not much. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's uh, mostly uh, all the arguments are supported by the references. Mm -hmm. That was good. Um, I forgot to um, explain uh, free to play and premium and the difference between them uh, because uh, there is no specific uh, terminology because uh, from when I should have mm -hmm. pointed out my own terminology. Yeah. Before. So that's good to get some feedback from. Yeah. Um, so usually when we when we build some sort of argument, we have to rely on the understanding of the terminology. Yeah. Right with the reader. And some terms within a certain community are well understood, mm -hmm. and some terms may be a little bit um, vague or yeah. not precise. And then you have to make it precise yeah. in your in your essay or in your you know master thesis. Yeah, yeah. I should have uh, explained the difference uh, in my belief between the premium and free to play because they're both technically free to play, mm -hmm. so that um, I see a difference between them. Still, slightly. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I should have put in that out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, the introduction was good, I imagine. Mm -hmm. um, the structure was good. Um, yeah, I don't remember what else. I'm trying to <laughs> skin read the rest of it. Yeah. So some of the. So, did you go the counter or not yet? Uh, Bjorn has counted it. Okay. Yeah. So, he has put up a lot of references for yeah. his counter, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a perfect counter for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, his, not the least. Yeah, uh, his main counter argument is uh, that of other monetary models, because mm -hmm. uh, I only used two. Yes. But I explained in the beginning uh, that I would only use two. Mm -hmm. So, that's. Yeah. It's a fairly good counter argument. Yeah, yeah so it's, yeah, I can remind. Like, mm -hmm. The first argument is kind of more of like, yeah, shouldn't really matter. Like, your model. Mm -hmm. more, you should actually find a model that suits your game, not the model that you can build a game around. Yeah. And, you know, kind of, it's more important. And the second one is kind of like, if I the saturation of the model market, mm -hmm. like, I, yeah, you're probably not going to be, it's not really that easy to see. Like, yeah. I think it's just, just like calculated and it was like 500 games per day or something. Like 630 games each day. Yeah. Like, come out. Yeah. So it's just like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like getting recognized is like more important than, you know, whatever you get money on. So yes. It's, it's a difference between like making one, some money, if you, if you get recognition, you will make some money, but it's just depends on how much you make. Yeah. yeah. And I should have so, created yeah. some assumptions at the beginning. Yeah, uh, specify those things. And mm -hmm. there's kind of some stuff about that. Uh, if you first succeed, 
if you go take a risk mm -hmm. on doing just a free to play game instead of you know, just continue doing filming games as you have a you'd make more money and you'd be safe. Yeah. Just keeping yourself financially viable, yeah. terms, even though they're crap games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my yeah. argument was that the um, first great uh, premium game to make money and then free to play games to mm -hmm. um, uh, rebuild your reputation. Yeah. So that you balance both. Yeah. Um, it's, you yeah. don't have to. Did you guys uh, in either of them mention the Android? Uh, difference between Android and iOS? Uh, I did not because I um, just talked about uh, apps in general, not just games either, just yeah, apps. Because, I think I barely mentioned it, but yeah, yeah make some it, specifics about iOS. I can't actually be generalized between those two platforms because... Yeah. A tree they, platform, because there's Windows as well. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I don't yeah, see yeah, Windows. Yeah, Windows. I can't but, forget Windows. <laughs> yeah, because the thing with iOS and Android is, well, in Android, you don't really have the protection that yeah. uh, you have with iOS. And mm -hmm. On Android, it's not very viable to have a paid game, as in yeah. or a one-time purchase game, because uh, the APK will be ripped and it will be placed on some website and someone can download it. Yes. Yeah, that's why I argue for just free-to-play and free -to Yes, and on iOS it's different. Uh, you can have the pay, and you won't you won't have that issue where everything gets stolen. That's correct. I do mention Angry Birds from one of my examples. Then I think uh, that's actually on Android as well. Yeah. Uh, I kind of mentioned, I kind of tried to avoid it, and just not not mention like specific decision mm -hmm. modes much, but then just take the revenue modes of both iOS and Android. I think. Mm -hmm. No, I think I'm, I'm, I'm only doing like the, I was only able to find the revenue models for iOS when I showed the statistics. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think like the top 20 developers take like 60% of all the revenue. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a very skewed, yeah. you know, long yeah. tail curve. Um, mm -hmm. And also, there was an announcement today suggesting that by the end of the year, the revenue from Android store. Play Store and um, mm. iOS App Store will kind of cross. So up until now, iOS was earning more money than mm. Android Store, but Android kind of caught up and will overtake mm. iOS App Store. Um, yeah, this year. Yeah. Yeah, because of the num shared number of users. Exactly. Yeah. So they used to be sort of more skewed towards iOS, but that has been leveled. Mm -hmm. And now the sheer number of users will drive the revenue, the gross revenue uh, towards um, Android uh, from iOS. Yeah. Minimal will be gold is just way down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is tough, so you... Both of you made, made arguments uh, for choosing a particular model. Yeah. Who do you ask who decides which model is the best? Uh, so if you have a startup or if you are a game studio, who is the responsible? Like why, how, how do you do that? The results. Yeah, exactly. The market <laughs> the decides, right? Yeah. The, you, you, you cannot make this decision. Oh, it's just an assumption. The, yeah, so you make you can make some assumptions, mm -hmm. and then you basically have to try out and pick the one model which works for that particular game with yeah. that particular audience. Uh, so it has to be an iterative process where you're trying to kind of get a good fit for yeah. the... You can also do like the Angry Birds, which is use like two versions, one that paid and one that's just... Exactly, yeah. So you can, you can to test it. Test yeah. different versions, see if works for you. And that's what most companies do, uh, because there is no single model with, which works. It, 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 it's not how it, how it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, questions to these guys? I think I asked my question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did, do we have? We don't have any questions or any comments for that. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on to Christoph. Essay. Yes. Um, Christoph. 
Christo. I think yes. Yeah, uh, it's uh, one yeah, of them it's... is uh, misplaced. It's uh, my yeah. <laughs> so one one of them. Uh, I mean, Eskil is for you, not for him. No, it is for both, actually. But uh, you see that he is popped up I quite instead of target. I see. Sorry, it's probably just wrong. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, you might need to delete the one. <laughs> That's so, so, from me. so he posted that for you as well? Yeah, uh, it's uh, correct in mine. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I just need to, uh, to. To be removed, this one needs yeah, to be removed. That's the yeah. Good one. Yep, sounds good. All right, so maybe you, you talk a little bit about your essay and about the reviews you got. So you read your Yeah, um, and... well, it's more positive than I thought. I thought it was slightly better than I thought it would be. Yeah. Uh, generally, I was expecting uh, sort of the scores that I got. Um, uh, did seem mostly positive, of course. I know that uh, there are issues in... Uh, Things to be improved? Yes, a lot of things to be improved. Um, it's uh, sort of the, one of the problems that popped up was uh, that I seem to be jumping everywhere. Uh, sort of, that's that's also an issue I knew I had because mm -hmm. I had to rewrite it so many times. Yep. Um, but the structure is good. Um, well, so let's take fairness. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, he had the issue with the flow as well. Um, yeah, uh, well, the sensors are good. There was also uh, generally the usage of the uh, the examples was also good because uh, well, park sense and uh, what was the other one? The falling detection for elderly uh, are actually pretty good examples of. Of good use of sensors uh, and what is possible for them to use. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, I do I do do some prediction mm -hmm. at the end, uh, which isn't very. Uh, it isn't supported by anything. Yep. Uh, it's just it's a novel idea, basically. I might that might come. Uh, I did try to search for. Uh, Someone that mentioned with uh, projecting light into the iris, mm -hmm. but I didn't really find anything. Uh, so mm -hmm. um, that was basically at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gen generally, it's a, it at least tells you what you need to know. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some, uh, like I completely forgot that uh, I wrote about VPNs, so I didn't explain what a VPN is. Mm -hmm. Or use uh, the correct term for it. Yeah. So, so maybe explain some more about what AR specifically is. Yes, uh, would probably be a good thing as well. Uh, that was also mentioned. So, uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, in your example, you don't really need to use the VPN. Yeah, because, because it's 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 on that. Yeah. So yeah. It doesn't really matter for, for the actual content. Yeah, yeah I, I should have probably just said okay, but it's. Get sent to a server. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes we we can include extra information, but if, if it doesn't contribute to the understanding of yeah. it, then you better not do that because you kind of confuse the reader even more, right? Uh, so you should keep the attention of the reader of where it should be. Yes. It's kind of like with games. Of course, you can do a lot of particle effects and so on, but you know, if it distracts more than conveying the story, then you know you, you don't do that. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I don't know, there wasn't much else, uh, generally okay. Uh, I did use the uh, a, a website for uh, the amount of growth mm -hmm. that the uh, smartphones have had. Uh, of course, the thing you mentioned about uh, possibly digging deeper and having all the references is valid, but yep. I'm not going to spend that much time on no. this. 
Uh, but it's a good thing to know for the future, at least. Um, I also had for uh, the FDA because uh, they talked about uh, about um, uh, the uh, difficulty of medical apps mm -hmm. uh, being released mm -hmm. uh, because, well, you do have to go through a lot of um, a lot of processes yeah. <laughs> to actually get it approved. I don't remember if I used it correctly, but um, uh, yeah, it may have. I don't actually see the where where I actually reference it. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, those are just small things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So given the, the feedback you got, would you what would you change? You would. Uh, reorganize it, rewrite it, or just make some small corrections? Or? I would, um, I would fix up uh, some of the structuring uh, because when I was reading others and doing reviews, I also noticed. Okay, so this seems to be something common. Uh, I've read more research articles since I wrote it as well, so mm -hmm. sort of gotten more of a feel for it. Uh, I would also try to focus on one thing uh, because I do seem to jump a lot. I would also do uh, more looking into uh, sort of what might have been predicted mm -hmm. to come or what is likely to come. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of said that, that um, one of the questions I posted is uh, what sense of will smartphone have in the future, right? Yeah. What, what will come? What we can expect? I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, it, there might come some extremely out of the blue uh, sensor that we can't even think of. Yeah. Some, because there are a lot of smart people actually working on this, so uh, it's very hard to actually know. But even the list of what modern smartphones are already equipped with is kind of a um, explaining yeah. the, the state of the art, right? So like if you just list all the sensors that a super set of all smartphones have, uh, that's already quite an impressive list. Yeah, um, because there are, I, when I was reading, I read about like magnetometers, like yes. <laughs> the figuring, yeah. uh, sort of gravity and so on. Uh, so there are, because most of the sensors that are today are actually really small, so they can be put into a smartphone, it's just, the manufacturer that decides what to place in. Okay. So also this topic relates to the um, to this privacy issue, right? So the the reality is that your smartphone is a device which knows the most about you. It not only knows your browsing history and your apps and so on, but it actually knows where you are and most of the time what you're doing whether you're walking or you're taking a bus or using a car and so on, it, because of the sensors, it is a very intimate personal device which kind of knows most of the time of what is happening with you, right? Um, well, not for me. My computer knows more about me than <laughs> yeah, my phone. When you're at home, that's true. But when you're like around where, you know, that you're currently at school and then back at home and so on. So your smartphone is capable of doing more than your computer is. Um, yes, in terms of in sensors, terms of yes. Sensors and physical physical and embodiment. Yes. Um, and then if all that information is like, you know, being tracked and analyzed and it kind of allows, yeah, it allows a lot of interesting use cases. Um, so. Yeah, good. Um, any questions? Yeah, uh, I haven't read your article, but uh, chapters and subchapters. Yes. In the article, are there any? Uh, I didn't set up uh, sort of a chapter structure either. Mm. I just felt like just writing it, uh, sort of try and get a flow without using sort of. Uh, set introduction, uh, so. So the, the actual yeah, so document looks pretty much the same as on the... Yeah. yeah.
So would you have uh, to have to transfer chapters if you were to apply it again? No, uh, but if it was longer, I would. Uh, because I feel like 1,200 words, uh, you can read that without actually having to divide it up. At least I feel like it. Uh, although I, when I read Eskils, it felt... You sort of had a clear distinction about where things are. Yeah. So it can be nice. Uh, but if you are able to write it in one single thing as well, it's, it can be yeah, easy to read. So th there is no kind of like real answer here. If, like, from reading the essays, you see that some of them use the restrict kind of uh, structure, um, and some don't. And then you kind of need to judge for yourself, right? So, personally, I think it adds a little bit of ease if you give the reader the structure, because they kind of visually can um, um, distinguish the, the blocks that you have, and it allows you as a writer to jump. Because if you start a new section and it has a clear heading, you can kind of jump from the previous thing to the new one like easier, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're doing how you did it, it's fine as well, but there is more work on, t on the writer to do the, the transitions. Because if you do have yeah. jumps, they do feel like, why? why? Why are we now having this? Like You actually have to guide the reader more carefully, and that's why you've got more comments about this jumping, yeah. right? Whereas if you did have the sections and ha have exactly the same flow as you have right now, people would say, yeah, that's fine, because the sections make the reader understand that there are jumps, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically, they need a uh, way to write it, yeah. but uh, yeah. they don't, you can use several jumps with chapters or something. So, so, you know, a rule of thumb is this. If you have a relatively low quality text, headings and subheadings help mm -hmm. to make it easier to digest for the reader. And then if you have no headings and subheadings, then they will be, and the text is not of very high quality, it will be judged sort of more critically than the text is, which is of high quality and doesn't have as headings and subheadings. That is the nicest tool to have as a reader. If you have a kind of a good, structured text without heading and subheading, which guides you through the narrative in a single way like he did now. But that's the hardest to achieve. But that's the best if you can do it right. Yeah, because <laughs> that's also the way books are exactly. written. Yeah. So, that's Of course, you have a chapter, but... But then you have, you know, pages yeah. of flow, and that's what engages you, and that's what... You yeah. don't want to read a book with headings and subheadings every half a yeah. page, right? That would really disrupt your engagement with the, with the text. Yeah. Um, but having said that, that's hard yeah. to do right. That's the reason why there are authors and we are computer scientists. <laughs> yeah. Because that's also the thing with computer science books, they do have the... Uh, a a well-defined structure, headings and subheadings yes. and so on, right? Um, but that's mostly because it's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah, so it depends. I mean, again, there is no clear answer to that. Uh, question. I'm just saying, if you need to jump, then adding headings and subheadings helps because it kind of uh, allows the reader to digest the jumps a little bit better. But if you don't need to jump and you can explain the flow in a, in a kind of a consistent manner, then it's better the way it is now because it will engage the reader more. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see what else do we have. Um, my internet just stopped working. Can you go back to the to the event? Yep. So we did three of us. Uh, we can discuss Alan, given that he is here as well and listens. So let's check. His, uh, his essay, he did use the, the headings, so he kind of provides more of a structure to the, to the write-up. Yes. Um, Can I listen to it? Yeah. 
well, one thing I would mention straight away is just uh, possibly having more bold colors for yeah. that. Yeah. So it's more clearly defined. Yeah. Yeah. It sticks out a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just having a bold characters, then you know, okay, it's a title. Yeah. Either bold character or very list and larger font. Yes. So we, we kind of did discuss uh, the essay before in the class. Um, so Alan, can you comment on the reviewers and the reviews that you got? Are you around? Yes. You, you need to unmute your mic. Might take a few seconds. Yeah, because the feeling is a bit delayed. Yeah, Alan check. So if, if you hear us, then uh, start talking while we're waiting. Um, I will just point out that he's uh, saying something. You, there was a tiny bit of a audio. Yeah. So the, the audio here is us. Oh, that's us. So, so, yeah. Okay. It, it, was it, 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 it was next to his box. <laughs> if, if it's on his box, that's him. Okay. That's us. Ah. So we are currently okay. on that box. Yeah. Um, so as, as I was saying, um, it is hard to confirm a negative result, right? So it, it like if his topic was the uh, mobile games plateau, do you just provide evidence that indicates that the curve is kind of a flattening, that there is less of stuff happening, right? In his argument, he has to provide evidence that there is more of things happening. But that's kind of hard because, um, you know, you have to pick the metrics which demonstrate that there was something less before, but it was as applicable as it is now, and then there is more of it, even though the externality didn't change. Because a lot of trends which, and you know, enable something means that you're comparing apples and oranges, like it wasn't really the case before and now it's the case, right? So we can say, your yeah, internet technologies didn't plateau because if we compare what was happening 20 years ago and what is happening now, it's like much more. But it's not much more because, you know, it, it's mostly much more because more things are now possible. It wasn't possible 20 years ago to have certain things, right? We didn't have certain technologies. Um, so now, this, this, you know, that, that argument doesn't hold. Like, it can still be valid that the internet technologies plateaued, right? Because they just did, now plateaued. Mm. But they, from 20 years ago, they were up growing, and now they plateaued. So if you compare to the past, you still cannot really, con you know, derive the logical conclusion that it didn't plateau right now. Right. And that's the hard, hard part. But he did kind of a good, good job. He provided uh, um, some evidence that there are new things which are stimulating what the mobile gaming is about. Um, but is it strong enough? You know, did, did you read his essay? Oh, yeah. 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 So what do you think? Do, do you can you? Confidently say that the gaming, mobile gaming, didn't plateau. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Uh, yeah. I would say they are reaching. So tough. They are, at least. The games that are now out are sort of reaching a plateau, um, mostly because people aren't aren't trying to innovate. Mm -hmm. They're just creating the same things, yeah. which is very scary for the mobile games market, at least. Uh, yeah, uh, more work in AR might sort of bring that curve to a stop so it doesn't plateau anymore. Yeah. 
Uh, but until then, I think it's sort of reaching it. Um, Yeah, because the new Mario game is basically an advanced version of Flappy Bird. Uh, yes. You have uh, the Clash of Kings, which is basically like the Facebook games that were ten years ago or something. Uh, it's basically Farmwell, yeah. uh, just made into a cooler setting. Yeah, they're re you're reusing old ideas. Exactly. So the, the thing is, the mobile platforms enabled certain things, and there was a growth and diversity of kind of things happening. And now the the growth is enabled by like AR or some other technologies which are coming along, but not kind of by the core mobile nature of the market. Yeah. So the the smartphones themselves. That part, I think, has been saturated, and the same ideas are being reused. With the exception of Pokemon Go, which, you know, it was possible before, and they were sort of real-world uh, games being tried, but we didn't have kind of many successful ones. Yeah, that's... Glo globally successful ones. And that's right? because they don't have the reputation that Pokemon has. That's right. So, but technologically, that was possible because of the smartphones. Yeah. Right? So we can have some sort of um, cross-media ideas which merge the real world with the uh, virtual spaces and with the ability of you to move around uh, in similar way. Uh, and that space is definitely not fully explored yet. We don't know what is possible and what was engaging in that yeah. space. Um, so, yeah, we will see. I mean, he, he gives kind of some arguments. We have um, Eskin doing the counter, so he um, probably argues similar to you that some of the old ideas are being refreshed and rehashed. Um, all right, so it seems Alan is not around. Um, let's do a final thing, which I... Um, so if you go to the... Um, if you go to SQL, augmented reality, and the mobile wearable, um, that that one is an example of a very well structured, um, you know, text with uh, clear headings and subheadings. Mm. Yes. And as I was explaining, yeah, you can sort of jump a little bit be between, because yeah. the reader expects that the next thing is the next thing, right? Um, so, yeah, so it does. he talks, yeah, if, even if you didn't read the article, he talks about like how the augmentation allows us to get more uh, from the real world because you have an extra information kind of being provided to yeah. you on the spot, contextually annotating the reality and so on. Yeah, I wrote um, a review for him as well. Yeah, so what, what do you think about the, the essay? I found it... Uh, Interesting. He does tell you, uh, sort of, he goes through the state of the art, uh, the possibilities that AR has, mm -hmm. uh, especially for improving people's lives, uh, as in the, uh, you had the ski AR and the um, other one, what was it? Handshake. Yes, handshake. Um, sort of, uh, the ski AR helps the yeah. skiers going down. The handshake just makes it easier for people to uh, share contact information. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, he also talked about the uh, potential for learning mm -hmm. uh, or teaching with it. Uh, and it could sort of make a classroom more interactive. Mm -hmm. uh, can have, like in museums, you could have, uh, uh, I don't know, a video play when you look at something. Um, we did have some uh, uh, usage of personal pronouns, uh, which could be avoided, or should be avoided. Um, 
Uh, yes, let's. Yeah, he did. He does have a clear format. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to read, and yeah. you don't get lost while reading it, uh, which are really good things when going to papers because uh, research papers can be very dry yeah. sometimes. So it it wasn't hard to read, so it just went fluidly. Uh, some parts that the general population might struggle to uh, understand, um, some grammar issues, but yeah. overall. Minus. Yeah, it's very good. You did a review as well? Yeah, that's what I missed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm doing a review, but I have not posted it yet. Okay. But like, for me, it's posted the same as Christian. Right. But uh, I uh, take a bit of paragraphs with the uh, grammatical errors. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's just yeah. kind of perfect. That, that's the form, right? So, yeah. yeah. That's the form, not the structure is really good. And the uh, content is also. Yeah, so this this was probably my shortest review as well because I didn't have too much nitpick on that. Right, yeah. Well, Ferrari was nitpick on all the drama. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the reviewer comes from preview. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.